Hey everyone, welcome to another discussion video with myself, Josh Thomas, and I am also naturally, naturally joined by my man, Rogers Bass. What's going on, Josh, you old buddy, old pal? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with you, I think is a better question. So, all right, I put out a video earlier today about this news, or this rumor, I guess, that Nikkei is reporting that the Wii U is ceasing production this year. And yes! This I know, and we both said this. A long time ago, I think as early as two years ago, we said 2016 would be the last year that Wii U has any games developed for it. 2016 will be Wii U's last year, and that they're going to jump into NX. And a lot of people said, you're crazy, you guys are idiots, there's no way this would ever happen. Mm -hmm. And now the stars are aligning, Josh. They and are. it looks like we were right. Exactly. And the main reason why I thought we should do this discussion, because I'm, I'm going to tell your viewers, I think this is the first discussion we're doing for your channel that I said we should do the discussion on because, <laughs> think, because I've been seeing so many responses to this by people who are furious that it looks like NX is coming out this year now. Um, and I just, I don't understand really why they're so mad. And I kind of want you to break it down for me, to tell me why you think they're mad, help me understand this, and also to sort of go over why we actually think, at the end of the day, we got our money out of the Wii U. Because a lot of people seem to be saying, like, why did I put all this money down on a Wii U? Like, I didn't get my money's worth. And I just, I wanted to talk about this with you. So I, that's why I want to talk about this as well. It's Great. funny, before you, when you were calling me, I was, literally record, I was literally recording a solo little mini discussion about this. That's why I originally declined your call. <laughs> perfect. So, so perfect timing. Um, so why are they upset? Well, I mean, I think they're upset because they're, they think that a video game console always has a five-year lifespan. And of course, the Wii U won't quite get to that. So I think that they assume that they've been ripped off in that way. Um, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. They're just mad because they are, I, I really can't answer that for you. I know. They're mad it, because they wanted the Wii U to stay along around longer. Um, maybe they're completely ignoring the horrible sales that the Wii U has. Yeah. And I mean, it's unquestionably bad sales. Like what you should put that graph I'm in going, the video. Right now. Yeah. I, yeah it's yeah. in the video. You can see right here, you can see the sales for Nintendo's, um, consoles as well as the sales for the software on those consoles. So the hardware and software sales. And as you can see, the Wii U is Nintendo's least popular home console ever. And also, I just want to point this out. It's also the least popular console by any standard. So like the handheld consoles all outperformed the Wii U as well. The only thing that the Wii U did better than is something like Virtual Boy or Game Boy Micro or something like that. Right. So looking at this, you can see plainly, very plainly, why Nintendo does not want to keep the Wii U out for much longer. And, and what really kind of boggles my mind, and it's something you brought up already, which is like this idea that, oh, you have to have a five-year life cycle for your systems. You have to. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, you shouldn't judge your system by how long it's been on the market. You should judge it by the games that are released on it. And I mean, to say you did, I just, it, it blows my mind to say that it's, there's no way you didn't get your money's worth out of a system that gave us four Zelda games, mm -hmm. which sure you could make the argument two were re-releases, one was a spinoff, and one hasn't been released yet. Fine. But they're re-releases of two of the best Zelda games of all time. You've got Hyrule Warriors, which is one of the best Nintendo spinoffs that they've ever made. I've played like 100 hours of that game. That was one of my Game of the Years two years ago. Uh, we have a brand new Zelda Wii U that's probably going to cross-release on NX, but it's still getting released for all those people who want it on Wii U. We got a Smash Brothers, arguably the best, best Smash Brothers in the whole series on Wii U. We got awesome evergreen titles like Splatoon, Mario Kart 8... Pokken, weird, weird little gems like Wonderful 101, Pikmin 3, um, Bayonetta 2, which I never even thought was going to get released, Woolly World, um, great platformers like Tropical Freeze, Super Mario Maker, Mario 3D World. I didn't even mention Xenoblade yet. That game alone is like a 90-hour game. You could spend a crazy amount of time playing that game. It's got, hands down, hands down, the best retro game library of any system to date, especially if you include the Wii Virtual Console, which is fully available through Wii Mode on the Wii U, and we got the introduction of Amiibo, all during those four years of the Wii U. Plus, I didn't even mention Nintendo Land, some of the other good other third-party games like Monster Hunter. It just, it blows my mind that people could say, as genuine Nintendo fans, that they didn't get their money's worth out of a Wii U, when ultimately, just having Smash Brothers and Splatoon, I feel like you would get your money's worth out of the system. Yeah, there's a, I mean, you know, it's not my favorite system as far as software or like just the concept in general, but you know, obviously 
everything you just listed there is true. There's a ton of games here. So to say that you haven't gotten your money's worth is strange. I mean, maybe they're saying like they just bought it a year ago or something. But here's the deal. You can still buy all those games. Like you can still buy all the games that were there before you bought it. So, yeah, I mean, and honestly, I don't know. I feel like if you bought a Wii U within the last year or so, kind of your own fault because you weren't paying attention to like the signs that this is clearly not going to be a system that's going to be around a lot you know for a lot longer yeah. it's funny my um my aunt was going to buy my little cousin a wii u this holiday season because she wanted to play splatoon and i said no no no, don't do that because wait till next year <laughs> wait till next year and <laughs> yeah. she could probably play splatoon on the new machine right so yeah i actually talked a few people out of getting a wii u recently just because i knew that this was coming right and for those people who you know waited to buy a wii u until like splatoon or last year or whatever just to play like one game and they're upset by this okay i can understand that and same goes for people who um who i don't know like bought it for maybe one or two other games early on thinking okay well maybe we'll get a metroid maybe we'll get something i could even understand their anger but someone who is a nintendo fan and there's lots of people out there who are nintendo fans who are grown adults who are not children who have discretionary income to spend on games who bought wii u at launch and can say with a straight face that there isn't a single game on the system they're interested in like you're not a nintendo fan like who are you trying to fool you know yeah i mean i don't even I, like i said i'm not the biggest fan of the wii u and even i feel like i got my money's worth out yeah. of it. P- pikmin 3 alone was like enough for me to care to buy a wii u i felt you know like what you know my game. turning point my turning point was hyrule warriors i felt hmm. like when i got and that's a weird game to, to pinch Gee, point, it but is, like, yeah i know but i didn't expect anything of that game and i remember picking that up whenever it came out like september 2014 and just playing the crap out of it for like a good solid six months. I have like 200 something hours on Hyrule Warriors. I spent, and they're still making DLC for that game. Like yeah. there are new characters coming into that game still. So that alone, plus like Xenoblade, which is something I spent 90 hours on, like I feel like I got my money's worth there. And I, my only gripe, and this is something I mentioned on Twitter, my only gripe with the Wii U is that we never got a Metroid, an F Zero, a real 3D Mario game or a true Animal Crossing. Those are the four massive exclusions. <laughs> My that come only to mind. gripe is these four or five no, things. No, <laughs> but I mean four, four games ultimately. Yeah. When you're looking at a system that has like 30 to 40 incredible games, like that's that's really not that huge of a gripe. And ultimately, like I, I wasn't buying the system like just for games that I think might come out. I was buying this system because yeah. I wanted to play Nintendo land. I was buying it because I'm a Nintendo fan. I was buying it because of smash brothers or, or Zelda. And it's mm-hmm. not like Zelda isn't going to get released on Wii U now. Like we've said this since day one, it's going to cross release. And I just, I don't get it. Oh yeah. We have been saying that for a long time. Since literally way. day one. Yeah. I think <laughs> like, we were. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I don't know if, I, who knows, maybe the NX will be backwards compatible with the Wii U. I'm not sure. We don't know anything about the NX, really. There's right. a lot of speculation. Um, the fact that the Wii U is ending its production this year sometime, I think definitely suggests, I mean, that's a, that, that is, to me, confirmation that the NX is coming out this holiday season. Oh, yeah, they, no They question. would not stop production of a console that they're going to support as their primary home console through the holiday season. That's not going to happen. And, and we should also clarify, too, that this report didn't say that NX is coming out this year for sure, but it no. did confirm that it is getting revealed this year. Right. And while this would be the first time since, I think, Super Nintendo that a Nintendo system would be released the same year that it's actually announced, um, it's, it's still like, who's to say that Nintendo can't change their minds? Like, just mm-hmm. because they had a certain way of doing things through, like, exactly. the, the N64 through the Wii U era doesn't necessarily mean that they need two years to have that turnaround for a system. Because, frankly, there hasn't been a system that has, quote-unquote, failed for them as much as Wii U has. So uh, we're in unprecedented territory right now, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Like, people are trying to relate the situation with the Wii U to the NX. They're trying to relate that to what has happened in the past. But, again, if you look at that chart... It's clear that this is not a normal situation. They went from having their most popular console of all time, one of the most popular consoles of all time, to having their least popular console of all time. That is a big, like, emergency situation, and you have to do things all sorts of differently in order to pull yourself out of that. Right. And another another thing I saw people talking to us about on Twitter was uh, the idea that they would discontinue a console when it still has games that are coming out the same year. Like, why, why would they logically do that? And I brought up the example of Pokemon Black and White 2. Because Pokemon Black and White 2, for people who are hardcore Pokemon fans, is arguably one of the best mainline Pokemon games of all time. And that game released on DS a year after 3DS had already been released. A year later! 
there's there's nothing that says they might not still make like Wii U games. They could still make games. They're just not going to make any more systems because they know that there's enough supply now. You know, people will still be able to buy it. They're going to sell through the rest of their stock of Wii U. And there isn't even a confirmed date as to when they're just going to discontinue it. They could discontinue it December 31st, 2016 and still be making systems up to that point, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah. I just, I don't understand. I don't think there's necessarily a lot of software coming out for the Wii U that Nintendo thinks is going to be a system seller to begin with. I think Nintendo's um, state of mind here is, listen, the people that are going to buy games for the Wii U from now on already have a Wii U, and we don't want them to buy a Wii U at this point, so Mm -hmm. we're not even going to make it available to purchase. I think it's really smart, actually, on Nintendo's part. I've been thinking this for a while. I've been thinking like how it would be smart for Nintendo not to try and sell the Wii U because you don't want people getting a Wii U so close to the NX launching. It's just bad business. It's a dumb idea. Something I'm also noticing here, by the way, uh, the hardware sales for the Wii U are higher than the software sales for the Wii U. Really? Yeah, which actually seems to be the case in a lot of systems. That seems very strange to me. Except for the GameCube and the Wii, most of the Nintendo systems sell more of the actual system than software, Hmm. which is strange. I I mean, I I think that E3 is going to be huge this year. It's going to be a... I mean, it's going to be night and day different from what they did last year. Yeah, guaranteed. Yeah, I think it's... Now, here's a question I have for you. I think this is still staying on topic. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be the year Nintendo shows the NX. It's going to be a reveal of a new system and a new controller and all that stuff. Will they do that in in a digital event or will they actually take to a stage and announce it on a stage, a typical... Old school press conference. I honestly have no idea. I think, again, this is uncharted territory. I think anything goes this year. They could do a huge, giant blowout Nintendo Direct with the same, like, cool Muppet Studio stuff and still actually make good announcements. Or they could just go all out, have a press conference, and really try to bring back that same level of excitement. And I think the full-on reveal of their next generation could warrant having a real press conference. Because Yeah, I think it does. I think it, yeah, I think it absolutely does. For it sure. Needs that. Because, I mean, 3DS and Wii U both had live-action press conferences, like, during the weeks of E3, so mm-hmm. I think it's probably going to happen this year. I think they're probably going to do it. I think they're going back to it. Um, I think they just are going to need to have that excitement in the room. And, you know, if you just look at the other companies that Nintendo owns, the other developers that they own, people like Next Level, Retro Studios, Tokyo EPD, you know, all these other companies... They're developing games, and we don't know what they're making. And they've been working on stuff for a long time, especially Retro Studios and EPD. They've been working on something for years since their last project that we know nothing about. And I feel like those two games alone, plus the already heavily rumored Pikmin, just goes to show that right off the bat, we're going to have an exciting E3 in terms of games, not even including hardware. I think in terms of games, we are going to have a very, very exciting show this year. So... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the fact that Mr. Miyamoto said that Pikmin 4 is nearly done and we didn't see it announced in that recent Nintendo Direct. I mean, and that Nintendo Direct was for games that are coming out in the spring and summer. And then we learned that the Wii U is going to be out of production soon. So that would suggest they're not really going to have a lot of holiday lineup titles for the Wii U. It'll probably be Zelda and maybe one other little thing or something. Um, I think that suggests that the NX and its games have probably been in development for a while now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I actually have a theory. So I don't know if I ever said this on a discussion before. I think that Nintendo didn't expect the Wii to fall apart as sudden as it did. The Wii went from like the biggest thing in the world. And then like early 2011, it just really kind of stopped being so popular. And I think Nintendo didn't anticipate that. And I think it was like at that moment where they're like, oh, geez, we I guess we really do have to start thinking seriously about what our next console is going to be and i think they were developing whatever the nx is going to be all this time but it just wasn't ready so i think when they knew they needed to come up with some sort of a sequel to the wii console i think they looked at all the ideas and prototypes that they have because let's be honest nintendo probably has so many controller and video game console prototypes that we've never seen so i think what they did is they said well we have this idea for a screened controller and we've got like a lot of little ideas around it let's make that the next thing and then while that's out we will continue development on this idea for the nintendo nx or whatever they would be calling it so i don't i think some people might be like oh that's going to be too rushed like man the nx is going to seem rushed out to market and everything i think it's the opposite i think the wii u was rushed out to market and i think the nx has been cooking all this time behind the scenes i 100 percent agree with you on that i think like the wii u definitely felt rushed to me and i think you you pointed out an exact pinpointed uh when the wii kind of started to lose steam 
Mm-hmm. And that was early 2011. Well, what happened in early 2011? They announced the Wii U was in development. And we sh- we saw the first prototype trailer of the Wii U at E3. And we saw that trailer for the next Zelda game. And meanwhile, during that same E3, they were showing off Skyward Sword for the first time. So th- I think that ultimately is what killed the Wii, is that they announced that Wii U was coming instead of just announcing it the same year in 2012 and saying these are the games we're making for it. They announced it in 2011 and they allowed the system to die. Mm-hmm. I think Wii could have easily held on for another year and a half, two years, had they just kept releasing games for it. Because heck, even the, the last Skylanders game that just came out, Superchargers, there was a Wii version of Superchargers that was released <laughs> last year. They were still making Wii games as of last year. So mm-hmm. there's no reason that they couldn't have held out just a little bit longer, maybe could have made some cool other experimental titles, localized some other stuff, and then held on for another year, and then waited and then developed their next real system. Instead, they wanted to rush out, you know, get some of those multi-platform games that were on PS3 and uh, and 360 at the time, try to get the good graces of the third parties again, and ultimately, that kind of blew up in their face. And based on what we've seen of NX so far, which is another thing that kind of boggles my mind, people are saying, oh yeah, this is going to make the third parties mad. Are you kidding? Third parties want NX to come out this year. They want it sooner rather than later. This this would mean that we get stuff like Final Fantasy VII's remake. We'll get stuff like maybe even the next mainline Final Fantasy game. We would get all these cool multi-platform games that would release on a system that could actually hold its own against the Xbox One and the PS4. I mean, and look at that Dragon Quest game. It. Dragon Quest, yeah, perfect example. And that's another game they announced that they were thinking about, you know, bringing to the next, you know, the Nintendo NX. And that was a while ago that that was announced. Yeah. I I really think that there have been some big studios that have been working on NX hardware for more time than we probably even think. Like, more Mm. time than the average person knows. Um, So, yeah, I I think that come E3, we're going to be blown away by this stuff that's actually far in development. I do believe that Nintendo NX is going to launch this holiday season. Um, and I think it is going to be friggin' amazing, and I don't I think anybody is going to be complaining come E3 when we see what it's all about. I will clarify this, though, and this is something I mentioned in my video on the news today, which is that I could see this, uh, because a lot of people are saying, oh yeah, well, it won't come out in 2016, it won't come out in 2016. This is what I think might happen. I think because people have been saying there might be a handheld version of NX and a console version of NX, yeah. what I think might happen is we might get the console version in North America, releasing in North America this holiday, because Lord knows Nintendo needs that big sales push this holiday, and that it might not release in Japan until, like, spring, like March. Because sales-wise, if you look at Japan, Wii U and PS4 are kind of equal sales-wise in terms of hardware in Japan. It's really not that big of an issue in Japan as it is here in North America. Like, here in North America, the situation seems desperate. So I could see them releasing the console, sort of almost like a beta test here in Japan, I mean, here in uh, in America, <laughs> over the holiday season, and then releasing it in Japan around March, and having, like, the full-blown real launch then. Uh, yeah, I can see that. I mean, it's funny, there was a rumor going around that they were going to launch with the handheld version of NX first, like it was going to be, oh, there's a handheld version of NX, and there's a home console, and the home console comes out in 2017. I think that, I don't know if that rumor has been explored anymore, but I think the fact that we're now learning the Wii U as a console is stopping production. I think that definitely kind of debunks that rumor a bit because if they were going to go with the handheld version, they would actually be pulling support for 3DS systems and not the Wii U. And I mean, 3DS certainly is not stopping anytime soon. Right, the 3DS is We're getting another Pokemon generation. I mean, we're getting Sun and Moon. It's not even like a sequel game. It's a full generation that we're getting now. So yeah, I think 3DS still has about a year, two years into it, but I think... 2016, just like we said, is the final year for Wii U. Yeah, I mean, are we still uh, going with the fact that we think NX could be a home console and a portable in one? Sure. Yeah, why not? I mean, I think that would be a pretty good selling point for a lot of people, including this sort of like mainstream casual market. I think that being able to say it's two in one, you can take it with you when you're going places or you can play it on your big TV at home. I think that's a, a really strong selling point for a lot of people. Um, and I think that could also be great for development of games. You know, we would no longer have to have the Mario Kart or the Animal Crossing team or whatever work on the handheld version, then the home console version, then the handheld. And home like that's a process that I think prevents games from being more that they could be and i think Mm. in this day and age this day and age it doesn't really make so much sense for a video game company to have two systems one for a handheld and one for a home console i think 
finding a, a great way to combine those is going to be huge. Yeah, and how awesome would it be to have the teams that normally work on something like Mario Kart, instead of having to shift their focus from a handheld version to a console version, instead they could make one awesome version of the game and just continually pump out content, like DLC right. content for it. Because clearly DLC has done well for them. If you look at Smash Brothers and you look at Hyrule Warriors, I mean, even Splatoon, which is free DLC, I mean, they're doing a good job with DLC. That's one mm-hmm. thing I think people can congratulate Nintendo on, is I think they're actually doing a good job on DLC. And if we actually have both of those teams working on regular DLC for all of their evergreen titles, things like Splatoon, Smash, and Mario Kart, we're looking at a at a pretty good, solid system. Yeah, and the great thing is, is DLC is obviously not as labor-intensive, so they could also be working on brand new titles as well. Sure, sure, so, like smaller okay. titles. I also want to point out, too, that this is the first time in a very, very long time that Wii U has been trending on both Twitter and... <laughs> and Facebook worldwide when there's not a Nintendo Direct or a new game announcement. This is the first time this has ever happened in a very long time that the system itself is actually trending worldwide on Twitter and on Facebook. So clearly this news is getting around even to people who are you know just regular tech news bloggers. Like they're mm-hmm. finding out this information. And I think it's exciting a lot of people. I think people are ready for that next system. And again, yeah. I think... For people who just bought a Wii U and they're going, oh, I'm so mad that they're not still making games for the system. Well, if you just bought a Wii U, then you haven't played all those awesome games that we've already mentioned. Go back and play some stuff. Just right, you're in a great out. position. Yeah, you're in the best position. You, you have could... all this stuff that you can play at your leisure that's there for you. You're not waiting years right. like we were for new yeah. content. Right, exactly. So, um, so yeah, I mean, there's you know, if you just bought a Wii U, tons of stuff you can do with it. If you've had a Wii U like me for a long time and you are ready to get the hell out of here, now I'm excited. <laughs> Roger, I woke up and this was like the first thing that I saw in the news. I was like lying in bed, grabbed my phone, looked at this, and I was like, oh my God. I like skipped out of bed. I was like so <laughs> excited. This is like, oh, I've been waiting for this moment. I'm so ready for, for the this NX. Day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's going to be great. Oh my God, if it launches with Pikmin 4. Oh man. And, oh. and really. Really, even the lineup for Wii U this year is still pretty solid. We talked about this in the last Nintendo Direct discussion, but yeah. we've got a Paper, Paper Mario, Mario game coming. We've got Star Fox. We still have Shin Megami Tensei Fire Emblem coming. And we've got a full mainline Zelda game. Mm-hmm. Those are four great games coming to Wii U this in one year. year. Yeah, it's, it's just crazy. And it's final year as well. For a final year, we got Star Fox, solid, Paper Mario, man. Zelda, and, and the Fire Emblem. Yeah. The and Fire Pokken. Emblem. Pokken just came out. It's taken a lot of fighting game players by storm. It's awesome. So I, yeah, man, yeah. I don't understand. It's, this is like a high. This is like a high point in the system's life, and it's the last year. It's, it's golden years. It's the golden days, Roger. <laughs> Do you watch the Golden Girls? I think I think. I yes, I. I was gonna say. I feel like you're the kind of person who would watch the Golden Girls. What the <laughs> hell is that supposed to mean? <laughs> One day we're going to be like the Golden Girls, Roger, living together. Living in a retirement home, just like playing old retro Nintendo games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think, I mean, that's pretty much all we had to say about it, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, E3 is going to be huge. I'm excited. Get excited. Don't be sad and sour about this news. It's a no, great be time. Happy. It's a great time to be a Nintendo fan right now, I think. There's a very promising future mm. in, in a lot of things. Video games, theme parks, and so on. All the mobile stuff come in? Yeah, I think yeah. there's a lot of good stuff. So Yep. So, Roger, uh, where can people find you to yell at you about your very strange opinions? Roger's Base. Roger's Base everywhere. On Twitter, on YouTube, Facebook, everywhere. Roger's Base. All right. Sounds good. Hey, Roger, thanks for having this wonderfully romantic discussion with me. You're welcome. Next time, I'll uh, I'll cook for you, and we'll sit by candlelight. It'll be great. Awesome. I'll bring the candles. <laughs> great. I will bring the tropical candles. We'll have the music from the Jaws ride playing in the background, <laughs> like by a smooth jazz rendition of the Jaws ride. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll see you guys later.